Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Rupinder Khurana, and we are live on IIHM Live Hospitality Talks. And today, we have on the show a very, very, very special guest, all right, who's joining us all the way from Mumbai, all right. He's the majority shareholder and the executive director of Eastern Indian Hotels Limited, EIHL, a company that was founded by his father, Mr. Ramesh Khanna, who built the Novotel Mumbai Juhu Beach and the Majorda Beach Resort, Goa. Welcome on the show, Mr. Khanna. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. So, you know, like it's it's uh, it's really a privilege that we have you on the show today and uh, sharing your journey is something that we would be, you know, all loving to hear. Yes. As to how, you know, I know that your your the genes are that you have borrowed from your parents. All right. But then your journey, uh, you know, into the hospitality and how you took over is something that we love to hear from you. So let me, so I'll just, so like you just gave that introduction. So this has been a family business where my father is the one who actually was probably, um, we're trying to find out whether he was one of the first Indians who went to Cornell University back in around 50, 1958 or 59. And so went there and got his formal Bachelor of Science education and then came back to India and well worked abroad as well in those days, came back to India because the family also owned the Claridge's Hotel in Delhi. Fantastic. That was actually started by my grandfather, wow. which was built. It was one of the first, rather it was the second five-star hotel in India after the Ashoka Hotel in Delhi. That's fantastic. And the Asian Games, this is in the late 50s or uh, 60s when the Asian Games had come to India for the first time. And Ashoka was the only uh, hotel and Claridge's was the second five-star hotel that opened there. So Claridge's hotel was the one that my grandfather built and my father came back and ran it as a general manager. So he started back then, then he went abroad, worked for various different chains, including the Hilton and walked in many countries and then came back to India when the family decided that they want to expand. So they came into Bombay and at that time we found, they found this plot of land where our hotel sits right now. Today it's called the Novotel, but from 1974 when we started building it was the Holiday Inn. All right. It was the Holiday Inn Hotel from 1976 when it opened till 2006. So he built this property by literally living on the premises in a small little hut while construction was going on because the family is based in Delhi. The whole family was in Delhi. So once we opened this in 76, I was what at the time about five years old. And we moved from Delhi to Bombay because this property had opened up. We ran this as the Holiday Inn. It was a franchise. It was one of the, not, it was the second Holiday Inn. The first one was actually in Agra. And then it came, then we got the franchise in those days to run it as a Holiday Inn. So it was, we, as the Holiday Inn, then in the late 80s, we moved to Goa where we got a amazing plot of land of 20 acre plot where he started constructing what is now called the, what was the Majorda Beach Resort. I say was because it's been closed for a, you know, one or two years because we're now going to renovate it completely, rebrand it and reopen it as part of an international chain. I see. So the Bombay Hotel uh, in 2006, our contract with Holiday Inn ended and we tied up with the Accor Group and reopened with a complete renovation in 2009 as the Novotel Mumbai Juhu Beach. The third Novotel in India in the current, in the newer scenario because Accor has come in and out of India on many occasions and this was their final where they really stabilized. Right. So being part of an international group there. So back to me, my involvement, just because I grew up in the hotel industry, surrounded by it all the time, I guess there was no other choice but to, but to get into it and always enjoyed it. So uh, when I was, I've done all my schooling in Bombay, when I finished uh, the 12th and those, for us it was junior college, 11th and 12th. And then I got into a different, I didn't go to Cornell, went to another university called Widener University, which is a, again in the a nice university in the US for hotel management. Right. So went and did the three year, well, four year program, but I finished faster because I took more credits and just for the students who are listening, right. just work harder. You can finish much faster. Yes. They really need to put in that. Yeah. Finish the course faster and came back into the business. 
Right. So I was working here as an EAM, looking after sales, front office, you know, going over those departments till about eight or nine years ago, 10 years ago now, decided to further, this is one company that we have where, and then we, I set up a second company where I started uh, opening up and built rather from scratch a boutique budget hotel of my own in Goa. So that I did with, and it has, it's a property about a two acre. We have 55 rooms now. We have villas and it caters to a budget boutique segment where, you know, we were in a position where it is so unfortunate the fact that all of us are sitting on Zoom calls because of this deadly virus. But this was the year where our hotel was taking off, where, as in we were getting in new contracts and then we've been hit by the virus and everything has come to a standstill. But it's something which is so interesting as a, this is a field which I always say that obviously there's no two days are alike. There's nothing that you will, you cannot, it's not routine. You come to work and there's nothing that is the same as yesterday. Whether it's a customer, whether it's a potential business you're running after, every day is different. That's what makes it completely unique compared to any other industry. And it's something which is, uh, I mean, everybody here who's sitting and trying to get into this industry, you know, we always have people who think that, oh, the parents of a lot of kids face opposition thinking that you're going to become a cook and you're going to become a waiter thinking that it's a down some in industry to look down upon. We are the ones at the forefront of hospitality. We all stand for hospitality. So there's nothing that can be more exciting than this industry, frankly, which is what everybody has to, people are appreciating that more and more. Absolutely. I would agree with you totally. In fact, like, uh, you know, hearing you talking about, you know, when you were five years old and all the smells and sounds of hospitality industry possibly must have, you know, got imbibed in you and, uh, you grew up into it was almost sort of said that you would be taking over the mantle and get into this because it was your family business after all yeah all right but then uh you know the journey uh you did not you know just walk into the position that you are today no. because no. you worked your way you earned your stripes because you you mentioned that you joined and you learned along the way so that's that's a good message that goes across to all the students who are watching and people who are wanting to get into hospitality that you can't be just, you know, uh, thinking that you will fly into a position, even no, if it's not going to happen. Family yeah. and the business, you no, will absolutely. Be the ropes. So that's, that's absolutely a very, very, very good message to go across. And also what, uh, see, one is because also when I was studying in the U S as part of the, like, like you have your industrial training programs, one of, uh, at least in my university, we had one entire semester dedicated to like a co-op program where you have to go out into the industry and work. And I'll tell you one thing, as far as the US is concerned also, uh, as working, and I want kids to also understand this, that dignity of labor is something which is very important. You should not feel that any job is below you. You should be ready to do any job that there is that comes that gets put in front of you. Absolutely. Something which whether I tell my kids this today or whether I tell some of the staff that or my the team that work with me today, if I'm walking in the lobby and if I see a piece of paper on the floor, I'm not going to sit and wait for somebody to come and pick it up. I will pick it up. And I and the reason I'm, it may sound very uh, something very simple, but unfortunately, a lot of people have that expectation key. It is not my job and it is not something that I'm supposed to. That's something I would like to, I don't know how much I would like to stress it to people saying that you have to be ready to do everything, whether it is being in a restaurant, whether it's doing a housekeeping, whether it's picking up a piece of paper. Today, if somebody had to, because I've from kitchen stewarding to pot washing, dish washing, I've done everything. And it's not something which, it's not a question of status and the, it's part of the learning experience. It's part of the job. And I really want to keep saying this, that it's something which kids need to understand these days. You, I have told a lot because we used to have a lot of industry training kids who used to come to us uh, in the holiday in Novotel. I, one thing, the, the word, use of the word, yeah. I cannot stand that when people, kids these days, I used to actually have a jar and make kids put in money if they kept saying, yeah, you say yes. It's Absolutely. not so difficult to say yet to learn how to say yes. Very and true. second is, 
I have told this to a lot of team members where if they say it's not my job, I'm not joking, it may sound harsh. I've actually stood in front of a boy, a, a receptionist boy and said, you have 30 minutes to pack your bag and leave. And you know, I'll tell you what it was about. On the reception counter, we have these clocks. The India, Japan, you know, India, yes. USA. Different time zones. Being yeah, there. and I came into the reception one day and the clock was either slow, it was not working. So I asked the guy, I'm like, why is it not working? It needs a battery change. The guy, I went to the clock, pulled it off the wall. I took out the battery, asked for a battery, put it in, I put it up there. The minute I'm putting, putting it up there and walking away, I hear the guy saying, ye mera kaam nahi hai. To change a battery on a clock in his reception, which is part of his, whether you call it duty or not, I'm telling you the guy within half an hour had, had to be thrown out. Not my job in our industry. Please don't. That's not not, you have no place here. Absolutely. If you're not ready to do whatever it takes, then I think it's better that the people that they don't, you know, look at it at all. Because you that's the only way you're going to learn. Absolutely. And across board, we, we all know how many departments we have. We all know what areas we need to work in. Please understand that you will learn only that much more if you're ready to do everything. Otherwise, it's never going to happen. Absolutely. That's something I really want to stress to people. And I can't say I, I would totally agree with you because that's something that I always, you know, tell our students as well. That's something that you have to, you know, that humility and you know, you know, forget that attitude which when you come in, that's something that you need to change. Because Absolutely. if you're coming into hospitality, that's something that you really need to imbibe. Yes. And you can't you can't just say and stand over there and say that this is not my job because any job is your job. All right. Because the guest. For the guest, you're the representative. Yeah. He or she does not know whether you have been allocated front office or food and beverage service or whatever. All what right. I've, what I've done in my in my Goa hotel, all my executives are wearing a single colored shirt. There is no distinction with the uniform. They're all wearing the same because I want a customer to be able to go up to anybody and ask for something and they will. True. And that's the only way it does. Why should the guests need to know yellow is room service, blue is housekeeping, uh, green is front office, nothing like that. You are there for the customer. And one, one thing which, whether it's students or whether it is our team members who need to understand, I keep telling people saying that I don't pay your salary. The guest pays your salary. The guest doesn't come into the hotel, the door shuts. So you keep that person happy, everybody's happy. Don't think that I'm going to get my salary whether I'm rude to the guest or not, I'll still get paid. You're not going to get paid because that you're, nobody will come to your property and automatically things fail. So please understand your only customer is your guest and of course your own colleagues within the, within the hotels itself. One department which because I had worked on it as a student as well is kitchen stewarding. Right. And I try to tell people also I'm like, you think that it's the most menial job where you have, a, you know, again in India, unfortunately, your KST is considered to be the lowest level job that's possible. I have been in KST and worked and done dishes and dishwashing and pot washing myself. If the KST person doesn't do his job, what does it mean? The entire kitchen stops functioning. If the kitchen stops functioning, people don't get fed. People don't get fed, they don't come back to you. So you think that poor KST guy is of no significance. Let him just stop functioning for one day and see what happens to your operation. No position is too inferior or no position is too superior. That's something which people have to understand. Absolutely. And they, I, I would prefer that they understand it when they're still in the, when they're still learning their right. degree versus going and then it's too late if they have attitude when they go into a job. Very true. That's important. Very true. I would love to know about your journey as a student because you went all the way to the United States and yeah. did your education. So a yeah. uh, little bit about your life as a student when you were a student in US? So, I mean, one thing is, uh, this was again in the, in the early, early 90s. So we were not in a connected world as much as we were. So it was much more difficult to stay connected with everybody like we are on a Zoom call and things today. But uh, going to the university was something of a new experience because you're going into uh, at 17 or 18 years old, going to a completely new country, living alone and completely separate from the family and literally learning to do a lot of things on your own. There again, USA, one of the best places where you can learn these things where dignity of labor, 
everything is nobody considers you to be higher or lower everything works so it's something which is important where i learned all things on my own from banking to sitting and studying to buying your own groceries to even cooking whatever little cooking one could do in your dormitory or in your apartment and uh, as far as the education is concerned uh, you know sit assignments because in india you are used to tuitions you are used to all the support services we never had any of that you had to do everything on your own that's some of the best experiences you can have and sit the college by itself like i said doing the work experience going and doing co-op programs and things like that that was something which was incredible we've gone through the whole you know similar to what kind of program you would be running here but definitely worth it as a and then i remember when we were just graduating email had just come into the world at that time so i'm ancient by the way <laughs> so am i <laughs> <laughs> these kids have it i'm telling you these kids have it too easy <laughs> i have a son who's in university right now who's in fact graduating probably by december okay. they have it too easy sometimes i think okay i think we need we were probably in a better era right <laughs> but i'm sure i'm sure you're going to be you know making him go through the grind and learn the way you know all the way up just but he's not doing my, he's not doing the hospitality unfortunately so what is he doing computer science okay he's one of those so high funda so he's going he's, to be breaking away from the tradition there. yeah which is which is okay i'm fine with that but maybe the younger one will do so we still have some hope so a lot of our students you know are uh, off late uh, thanks to uh, not only the situation that we are in and also our uh, prime minister advocating it uh, talking about being self sufficient atmanirbhar so a lot of them are contemplating becoming an entrepreneur absolutely so you being from a family of entrepreneurs who who have ventured into hospitality and uh, set it up started off and then you know built it to you know uh, you know move from a city to move more you know had more hotels come up in another city so a message to them or you know any guidelines you know if they need to be an entrepreneur so what are the most essential things that they should be you know looking for or how do they start off so a little bit of a basic guideline for them if whether we taught that in school or not as far as hospitality location 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 uh, that is something which uh, kemens wilson had said when he built when he started the holiday inn chain so one is of course is going to be choosing the right place don't sit and put up get start looking at doing something just because you want to get into it be able to get the right location whether it's a restaurant today you want to start a hotel on your own but you'll need a lot of patience that is one for sure uh not to sit and work with the state that you're in because a lot of thing happens is we all know that we have with the number of states we have in our country we have unique challenges in each state but something which just sit and do a little bit of homework i would say about your state your conditions the rules before you really venture into it please do not get into a business where you will start doing something and then try to sort out problems as you go along one advice is exactly that is just see the the requirements of that state and then go accordingly because you can then make contingency plans which you would you'll be able to foresee rather than getting to it and then trying to resolve it becomes very difficult but please most definitely get into your own uh, businesses and things because this country needs hospitality it needs rooms it needs restaurants much more than we even imagine but it's a journey it's going to be it will be well worth it but just i said a lot of patience is required yes it's going to require a lot of finance because again one problem if i can call it that in this country we have is the land cost and land cost sometimes is half the project cost and that is something which very often makes things unviable so please plan if the land is available and location of course then most definitely one can consider it and my personal experience even though we have a five star we have two five star properties i entered into the budget space my personal opinion and is that budget space is the way to be in this country at least in india you do the budget segment whether it's a three star three star plus category what does a customer want when they come to you they want a clean room they want clean sheets they want basic cleanliness and hygiene 
five star, seven star hotels are there. And I don't know how many new ones are going to come in because the prohib prohibitive cost of land, budget hotel and the budget segment is the way to be. There's a huge potential. India is a tip. Like we, you know, we have the statistics about a New York City has two, three hundred, maybe three hundred, four hundred thousand room nights, and the entire country of India does not even have hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand room rooms available. So when a city, one U.S. city, is equal to an in, more than an entire country, just see the potential that India has. And again, personal advice: budget segment is the way to go, because that has the biggest scope. It's the easiest way to expand. Moving into Tier two, tier three cities. The beauty of this country today is that we have not even begin to explore tier two, tier three cities because that's where the potential is. We don't even realize how many people are traveling there, how many people need facilities which don't exist. So students who don't look at the glamour of the big city, you're better off sitting and going into a small. Let's say you're from a smaller city as your hometown. Look at doing something there itself. You're better if you have the base, you have the background, and you'll be able to do something, and it will work. Five cities are saturated. Bombay, Pune, we go crazy with traffic. We have all the, we have our own. You're far, far better off in going into a, a tier two, tier three city also because that's where the potential is. It's, I mean, we don't even know that. Statistics like malls and shopping, they, your Amazons of this world will give you better statistics on. How much business they do in these kind of cities versus a Bombay and Delhi? Agreed. Something which kids need to do that budget segment. Personal opinion, but even though we have five stars, I would put make this into a budget hotel if I had the choice. We'll do much better. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, I I think like uh, you know in a city like Mumbai where uh, the rates, you know, if you are looking for a room for a night, the rates are prohibitive, yes. and. Uh, you know and very difficult to you know find something which is reasonably uh, priced so yes. and when you're looking at uh, a business i'm sure uh, it would make better sense as you're saying to go into a tier 2 or a tier 2 a tier 3 city and starting off your business because obviously the land prices as you talked about would be much much uh, affordable and uh, location wise you would be in a better place to get a better location in a smaller city Yes. than in a bigger city which will you know definitely charge you a lot yes right so a lot of our students uh, you know obviously are drawn into being an entrepreneur and setting up their business and a lot of our students have been of late getting into such a field all right uh, but then funding is something which they you know find to be difficult to get so any any word of advice for them as to how can they you know fund whatever their dreams are do you advise that they should, you know, you know, build up their own capital and then invest, or can they look for funds and uh, possibly you know, start off early? Uh, funding, of course, biggest challenge. Funding is uh, if the location is right, if the project is going to be right, you should. I would always, yes, I agree. Uh, I don't know. I keep saying the expression is OPM, other people's money. Right. Is to sit and use other it's people's money. Crazy. So yes, use a bank loan. If that is something that is available to you, because let's hope that interest rates are coming down today. And if you can plan that, don't block your capital completely because keeping in mind, nobody forecasted this COVID, but keeping in mind eventualities like this, your capital will come useful to get you out of a mess which you can be in. But yes, institutional funding is available. And for when I expanded my Jasmine, uh, I had 24 rooms initially, and I added a completely new wing of 30, 31 rooms, taking it up to 55. I've used bank funding for that. I've not used my own funds. So institutional money, please do definitely look at that, but also plan the payment ability. Don't go that. So your capital, keep that towards repaying of the interest and the, and the, and the principal and use it for that, but use that money to build it up because the returns will be. And, and uh, rates are coming down, so it will become more affordable. And like you just said, also, it's the land cost in these smaller cities, which is affordable. It's the best place to start. Bombay, I'm, not Bombay, I'm saying metros today are just, it's just impossible for even a, a large chain to sit and look at a project today. Look at the large lands in Bombay, where the Ciroc Hotel, you, the erstwhile Ciroc, which was 
which which was brought down post the bomb blast and then it was bought tata group has bought it finally now they wanted to put up a huge building there and connect it to the lands lands and which is already they bought over from the uh, lakadawala at that time one is they are facing problems with approvals and because let's not say to but people are asking for favors which tata as a principal group does not want to do which they right and then the cost the cost of putting up that property will be so exorbitant that when are you going to get the returns on that whereas you put in into a smaller city you put in a 50 60 room budget hotel with one restaurant because you know that there is the potential market there your returns will be that much faster very and true. returns are 5 to 7 years you can expect to break even and then just then it's then the only way is up absolutely absolutely uh you know times are tough and we are all you know waiting in fact maharashtra is still waiting for us to you know commence our operations because uh, till 30th of june we are still not uh, in a position to open up but then uh, i'm seeing that the other hotels in other parts of the countries are oh. opening up from today right. and that's very good news all right because uh, you know we really need to get going oh, and uh, we can't be you know shut down forever Yes. So, what's what's what are you in in this aging as you know someone who is in the hospitality industry now for generations and uh, what do you see the future to be from here onwards? Now, talking so I I can give you Bombay and Goa's perspectives. So, as far as Bombay is concerned, we were also excited and wanted to open on the eighth, but Maharashtra, like we know, and even Goa government for that matter, has kept us closed till end of June. uh but post july it all depends on the flights that are operating if they are because currently flights are still taking people stuck from one end to the other they're not really bringing in new business as such correct but uh, i would say metros can expect business to start picking up from july itself in fact in the novotel for sometime next week we got a wedding query believe okay. it or not in the peak of covid we got a wedding query which All right. As per legally, fifty people norms and all that, we can actually do that because restaurants are still out. We can still operate a restaurant, right? Right. So business, I would say, in the major cities will open up by let's say post July. It will start picking up. But we, when we've done a budgeting for the year, uh, they uh, the Novotel works as a foreign group. Accor works on a calendar year. They don't work on financial year. Now Jan to December. Fifty percent of our budget, revised budget for the year twenty twenty, we did in the first three months. Fifty percent. Fantastic. No, fifty percent. No, fifty percent of twelve months we did in three months. Right. So the balance fifty we're going to spread over nine months, which shows you how uh, pessimistic we are as far as the rest of the year is concerned. Right. Because you know we would have, we had, we had made some incredible budget which we're never going to meet. Okay, so we are going to be literally breaking up nine months worth of business of, of uh, folk budget, which is something which is very it is tough. So uh, metros are going to face that. Goa. Now we have decided one is till end of June, but we as a hotel are going to probably stay closed till the end of July, because again borders not when buses are not running it becomes difficult. Trains don't operate. how many people are going to come by flight but with 800 hotels in goa it's not like your hotel or my hotel will get the business so we are going to be we are talking to our travel trade they are also excited that look one advantage we hope of goa is that because people are not going to travel abroad goa is the one destination everybody want to go to so let's touch wood that goa will pick up as a destination but october onwards is is to be really realistic october onwards is when it will pick up and if our foreign we get a lot of charter flights coming to go directly from the uk and the cis countries russia ukraine etc if those flights come in then we can actually salvage what we have lost for the year so we are not we are very optimistic from october onwards as a goa market bombay july onwards see we'll start picking up a lot of restaurant business in our hotel we are more than a typical novotel because a normal novotel only asks for one fnb outlet we have five and we have huge banqueting so we anyway do much better so you know people who may think twice about going to a standalone restaurant they don't know the hygiene they're not sure of that in a hotel 
we're going to have number of international certifications without which we ourselves don't want to open, right? So customer will get a more uh, better sense of uh, safety in a hotel than he would in a standalone. So then we expect F&B business. Our hotel, as an example, does sometimes 55% of its revenue from F&B versus rooms. That's so it's good. huge. Yeah. So a lot of Bombay hotels can recover. Metro, metro city, let me say metros will recover. Resort destinations, Goa will probably get out better. But I feel I'm afraid for a lot of resort, uh, other resort cities in India, which or towns which may not do as well. You know, Kerala has gone through so much in the last year. They had the floods they had. And then this year, the floods had started. Then, of course, COVID has hit everybody. So it's something which imagine how much they've gone through and then they're still trying to pull through. They're an example for others. Goa will Goa will definitely pick up, but it will be a little bit late. True. But then Kerala has been doing uh, very good in terms of numbers. Uh, you know, they've been you know, able to you know, beat the, you know, the way it's been going for the others, other uh, states. Right. Right. They've been able to keep it in check. So yes. good news for them. In fact, that's that's the message which is going to go across to a lot of people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Obviously, if they're looking at a safe destination, they will definitely think of you know all these aspects that you know Kerala was able to keep uh, COVID-19 infections in check yeah. considerably. All right. So that would be an incentive. But then Goa has been in a green zone as well. Goa, but no longer, unfortunately. No we longer have over 250, 300 cases there right now. But industry, yes. industry will look up, will be careful. We are, we are all going to do certifications. And again, for our own satisfaction, we have to look after my team members first, and then my customer has to be protected. So now the biggest thing is that what will happen to rates, whether rates will go up or down. We can't afford to reduce rates because today we are going to be putting in a lot of extra effort into all these hygiene and sanitation. That comes at a very, very big cost from sanitizing to, you know, the cost of chemicals alone is going to kill industry. It's going to kill the industry this year. So we have to maintain our rates. Customers have to understand that we're doing it for their safety. We're going to see a few things changing in resorts when it comes to typical hotel service now. Touch points are going to reduce. Right. Bell desks, doormen, those things are going to disappear. Restaurants, they say buffets, you can't serve a buffet anymore because they don't want anybody coming in. So either you have a boy standing behind the counter and serving the customer. And then, of course, reducing of the restaurant capacities. With six feet social distancing, you're going to reduce your capacity from, let's say, 100 covers to straight 50. Correct. Then what happens is to staffing. Staffing also comes down. And this is where we as an industry are trying to talk to the government to say, please help us because... If we have 100 staff today, tomorrow we are actually going to need only 50. What happens to those poor 50 souls? They're going to, that's, going to be, that's going to be an issue. So we need support from the government when it comes to this because we will make sure the guest is safe. That's for sure. And, and six months, eight months, vaccine, no vaccine, COVID is going to fade away because it's something which once you get into herd immunity and things like that, it will reduce, then things should get back to normal. But we will have to be careful and we'll plan accordingly. So forecast is, this is what I see for at least metros and even a resort destination like Goa. Right. So before we wind up, uh, you know, a lot of, lot of the viewers would be people who are looking at hospitality as a career. And of course, right now with, uh, with the situation being what it is, uh, they'll definitely need to be reassured that this is an industry which is definitely going to come out, as you mentioned, six In months, seven months we will be back into operation and back to doing business, maybe with new normal, as, as you put it, uh, with a lot of, lot of uh, stipulations which need to be incorporated when we operate. Uh, but then it's going to be reviving, definitely. So, but then for the people who are currently studying and looking at joining the industry and uh, you know, thinking about, you know, is this the right time for them to be launching? So, a lot of lot of ifs and buts questions coming into their heads. So, your advice to all these uh, you know people uh, who are watching, who are currently at that stage where they're still to step in, and some of them maybe already are in the industry. Uh, what would be your advice for them to do? You don't worry. It's not something that you've taken a career. You've taken a decision to get into a career which has 
are fabulous opportunities and don't for, don't forget the kids that it's not just pure hotels and restaurants hospitality covers whether it's airlines whether it's cruise whether it's a cruise industry it covers a huge variety and hospitality industry students or let me say graduates are always going to be in demand across board you will be surprised how non hospitality industry want to pick us pick our people up because it's a service industry they geared to provide service which is what is the the future is going to be all about service so these kids need not worry because it is something which will there will be plenty of opportunities across board i mean we have seen if you remember when the call centers had started in india i'm not i'm, I'm just telling you just to give an example they started picking up hotel, hospitality students left right and center the pay was fantastic and why because they trained in understanding you know you you guys are doing a fantastic job in teaching these kids what they need to go out into the industry and so when they whether they're talking on a phone to somebody or in person nobody will be able to provide that level of service that a kid from a catering institute will do so they don't yes you like you said ifs and buts do exist but opportunities are not going away please understand that kids it's something which there's going to be plenty of opportunity to do that we as the industry will always need people i on one end while we are reducing doesn't mean that it's going to go away we still need because luckily i'm going to have hopefully a lot of kids who will be trying to open up their own businesses right like we spoke right. about entrepreneur opportunities they need to pursue that 110% and they will get people from the industry so it's not it's a blip that is there but those blips are literally they you know like a ecg it goes up and down but then at the same time we have, see we follow cyclical periods as well and if we right now not india it's the entire world is where it is today so you are not in a unique position people all across the country uh, across the world are in the same place and it has to go up the only the only way is up and it will happen so i don't want them to be concerned that oh what have i done what have i got into not at all it is something which there are going to be opportunities and you guys are the ones that need to get out into the market we need your kids in our hotels we will always want to take just to give you a little bit of assurance i'm saying i'm the kids uh hotels like branded chains like accord today or marriott or thing the first and last people they want to pick up are always from institutes kids have to understand that because they the career opportunities that you have when you get into a chain especially all these international chains in india is fabulous and they want to give you that opportunity you get into a uh, accord today you get in as a steward you think you you get in as a steward you will be a general manager of a property depending on your ability sometimes in as under 5 to 8 years you can be a gm of a smaller you see there are multiple brands like we all know they know that from an ibis to a sofitel and i'm talking of an accord where they have different brands kids right. who have come out because they you've got the formal education when you're coming out you're starting you have to start somewhere you're going to start as a steward you're going to start as a receptionist front office person but depending i have seen in uh, to be opened as a novotel in 2009 july okay we are today okay yes it's been 11 years wow we know it was 10 years 11 years but there are one or two people who started as duty managers and things today they're general managers of uh, of novotel level hotels in under and and before that they've been in the smaller hotels as well so 7 8 years they've gone and become general managers why would you have to worry when you do that and please note that the chains in this country are growing and again their first target rather where they need people is from institutes like yours where you guys have spent so much time and effort studying so please don't be afraid ki kuch nahi hoga bahut kuch hoga you don't need to be afraid of this because we will pick people up whether it's our hotel here or whether it's any chain and chain wide you've got fantastic opportunities don't despair please that's not something that kids need to do just do well at what you're doing but one thing which i was said much earlier this please don't get into this ye mera kaam nahi hai that's something which i think if you do if you believe in that then i'm i'm openly saying it whether it sounds aggressive or not don't get into this uh, please tell the kids that 
if they're listening and they think that's something they need to and they will and they will listen to this later in their careers when they understand that what i mean by when i say that it is it's not it is your job everything is your job when they go ahead in the career they will find out what what that means they will understand that i'm sure i'm sure they will uh, that's a wonderful positive message from mr manish khanna hearing uh, you know his life that he is uh, invested thoroughly from being a 5 year old <laughs> it's gone white because of that <laughs> uh, you still look very smart all right so white may come in you know that's that's indicative of you know maturity and uh, knowledge setting over there all right so uh, his journey that has been from you know 5 years to i'm not you know disclosing your age right now but then that journey that long journey uh, is something that our students can really learn from and you have very 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 uh, lucidly encapsulated your journey uh, from being that 5 year old to today where you're heading the organization and uh, it's something that our students should be able to pick up a lot from you know whatever nuggets you have strewn along when we talk and uh, i'm sure they'll uh, you know be a success in the future and when they look back i'm sure they'll remember quite a few things which you have highlighted today and one of the most important things big take away everyone who's watching is that don't think that any job is a menial job uh, mm -hmm. every job in hospitality is your job all right for a guest you are representing the hotel and for him he he when he requests you to do something you better do it because that's that's your job all right because he's come up to you or if you as uh, you know mr khanna has given an example that He even he stops. He stoops down and uh, you know picks up a piece of paper if he sees it lying down on the floor. So that's your job as well. So if you're walking across, whether you're the general manager or whether you're a steward, it doesn't matter. If you're seeing something which is amiss, you really need to make amends. So that's a wonderful takeaway. Thank you so much for taking time out from a very busy schedule, and I'm Thank looking you forward to you know meet you in person and whenever that's I'm next in Mumbai. Absolutely. All right. Let things stabilize, and I'm sure I'm really looking forward to to the industry, in fact, bouncing back, and uh, looking forward that hopefully in month of July we will see Mumbai hotels opening up, and slowly limping back to their old glory with all the new uh, stipulations in place. We Thank will. you so much. Thank you so much, and everybody, all the best to all the students out there. And again, I'm saying you guys have, please understand, you've chosen a good, you've made a good decision. You've not made a that bad decision at all. So please be assured with that. That's it. Whatever little assurance I can give you, it's something which you've done. You've done well. Please just finish it and walk and walk into the into the sunset, so to say. Right. Thank you so much. On that Thank note. Thank you most welcome, and we'll be in touch very soon. Right. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Best of luck, everyone.